All right. And welcome, Alan. Okay, so w while everybody's coming in, I'm going to start on time, as I mentioned. Welcome. I'm super excited about the session on the AI business analyst. Just before we start, I didn't come up with a name. Maria, which is one of my interview, came up with the name, but I thought it's very um, useful and appropriate for this particular thing. So today we're going to talk about what does AI look like for business analysts, particularly what does the role look like? And I'm going to share some insights around all of the different um, sessions that are held live with speakers over this time. Quite a few people <laughs> coming in, so I um, yeah, might so, need to give yeah. it a minute. But anyway, so today what we'll be covering is I'll be doing some introductions. Um, so I'll give you a bit of an instruct introduction into who I am and what this is about. We'll look at the key insights from global leaders. So I interviewed forty people, and the reason for that I'll go into that in a minute. We will also look at the evolution of the business analysis role and what that might mean for you. I'll talk about the critical skills that would be needed for 2025 based on what the AI business analyst really. We'll also look at the new job description. This will be a free download full job description. So the links will be provided after the session. And then any closing remarks or QA. So I'm going to try to get through this pretty fast. If you want to ask any questions, please put it in the chat. We'll come back to that a little bit later because I need to navigate between what everyone's asking and what they're not. So Jigs, welcome. Also one of our um, Blueprints for Success interviewees. Yeah, it's great to see everybody here. So that's what we'll be covering. So a quick introduction to who I am. My name is Deirdre Karen. I run um, Agora Insights. I founded Agora Insights nearly eight years ago. And I train business analysts and business architects on how to get certified and do various other things. So I have about, we cover about 90 countries. Um, it's actually 97 as of yesterday. So we're just waiting to get to that 100 countries. So <laughs> you must put a list out there saying which countries. But I also recently co-founded Aiden, which is an AI startup, which is very exciting. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. And that was really understanding how it's going to impact our role far more. Far more. So... Let's just talk a little bit around the Blueprints for Success series. So at the, at the end of last year, I thought to myself, when I started using AI, I thought, I really need to understand what people think about AI and what is AI going to mean for me in the future. Uh, I embraced it completely. I am a geek, and this is what happens with geeks. Uh, we kind of embrace what AI might be for us. But I also recognize that AI, we need to be speaking with people. And if you look at business analysis, particularly, we need to understand who our stakeholders are, what they do, why do they do certain things, what's the culture, what's, what's behind, what change we're initiating. So I decided instead of talking about um, stakeholder engagement, I do it. I'm pretty much like that. So over the last year, I've conducted over 40 interviews and in our blueprints for success. I'll talk about two key areas and then I'll mention all the speakers. But Delvin is the president of the IOBA. And so his quote on AI is, as AI gets better at requirements, it will either accelerate the problematic parts of the business or benefit the good parts of the data. 
And then Susan, you might see her a lot on LinkedIn. The future of business analysis will likely involve more strategic roles and a deeper integration with AI. But the core skills of analysis and decision-making will remain invaluable. So I chose those just to highlight because those are obviously the uh, IBA speakers that I had on the show. So really fantastic insight. From a business analysis perspective, you'll see Jake's spoke about leadership. We had Roger Bolton talking about collecting, correcting, and connecting the dots. We had Fabricio. He spoke about business analysis and AI. I mentioned Susan and Delvin Kingsley, who spoke about how we should continue learning. We mustn't think we know everything. We have to unlearn some things. We have to relearn some things, which is really good. As I mentioned, Maria coined the term, the AI business analyst. In our session, it spontaneously occurred, and I thought that was a really good prelude. Bindu spoke about cybersecurity and how cybersecurity is really going to have to be ramped up with AI in that particular area. Vince spoke about navigating the future and that things like agile might not be required in the future. Tamara spoke about how technology can really save lives and spoke about the Children International. Really spoke about machine learning and that we only 10% are where we should be with generative AI at the moment. So there's going to be massive growth uh, in the future. Arthur is an author and he's written a book called Hitchhiker's Guide to AI. So fa fantastic insight. And he compares that to the internet when the internet first came out in the 90s. And he's Slogan there, I think I'm, I might be misquoting, but his slogan there is don't be afraid. And then Jamie spoke about the evolving role of business analysis, particularly working with stakeholders. But Yulia, how to prepare for the future, understand the difference between using tools and actually relying on tools. Marcus spoke about business analysts, the future, and also a, a bit around the role, like how do you add value around your role? And then uh, Dr. Kitty, she's joined us today. I know that she's here. Um, sorry, I can't see everybody on the list at the moment. You've written a book and spoke about business analysis, human intelligence, and AI. And then Regita, Beyond Business Requirements, that was great as well. Pamela, a journalist. And I found that really interesting because, as I said when I was chatting with Pamela, I think business analysts are like investigative journalists for business. So also a book coming out on stakeholder engagement next year. Sheng Hung really loved his design thinking approach and thinking more holistically about design and user experiences. And then Angelo, for those who don't know, Angelo, the BA, he does a YouTube podcast and really a great, great session as well. Insights into things like knowledge graphs and information architecture. So I'm just highlighting those that are directly related to business analysis um, in this particular session. Super happy to have everyone join me. As I mentioned, there is a link. You can download freely the comments from all of the speakers. There's also videos and blog posts that I'll provide a link for. So let's look, have a quick look to just set the scene on what we're going to be discussing. Just let me know. We showed less than 10% were using it, but more than a third wanted Sorry. to use it. <laughs> the following year, when we repeated the research, we Might asked those to... questions again, and we discovered that instead of the third or more than a third using it, it had gone up to... We showed less than 10% were using it, but more than a third wanted to use it. <laughs> The following year, when we repeated the research, we asked those questions again, and we discovered that instead of the third or more than a third using it, it had gone up to something like 14%. So it's still close to one in 10, as opposed to now three or four in 10. And then we asked, why are you not using these technologies? And we gave a number of options. And one of those options was 
cost and another one was skills. And we discovered that it was too expensive for most companies to use AI and the skills didn't exist. And those go hand in hand because if the skills don't exist, then it becomes very expensive to employ or train people in those skills. In effect, what we found then in 2017 and 2018 was that that enterprise was not ready for AI because of the lack of skills. That was really insightful from yeah. Arthur, who actually has done a lot of research into the growth of AI. What has changed since Chat uh, GPT came out is that there's now approximately a 60% adoption rate, which is quite significant from what it was previously. Okay. And then. Yeah, a a AI is going to grow in importance. It's going to transform how we do work. And one of the things that I say in my research is AI will never replace a BA that knows how to use AI will replace a BA that doesn't. And yeah. so I, I consider this time our on-ramp to learning. And this is the time to take advantage and learn. Yeah. Those, are the, those are two of the ways that I see I would, I would absolutely agree with you. The so those are two short snippets. There's heaps of them from all of the, the people that I've interviewed. But yes, I absolutely agree. You will need to understand the skills. And the reason that I say this and I emphasize this over and over again is that business analysts are change agents. And as change agents, you're constantly working with change in organization and technology changes. And this is going to have a much bigger impact. So yeah, it, it shows AI just in 10% Let's just go there. All right. So just a prelude. So we often talk about the wisdom pyramid, which is when we work in as business analysts, we work to understand the data. So we want to gather the parts. We want to connect the parts. So we want to bring together some information. We want to understand knowledge. So we want to know what matters, what is important in all of this. And then we look at wisdom. And wisdom is about making decisions. It's very much how do I make decisions? So how does AI fit into this particular area? And quite simply, AI can get you information a lot quicker. And obviously, it all depends on data, right? So the data that you have, if you've got really bad data, really old data, it's not really going to help you. But AI can absolutely look at data and give you good feedback on data. When we look at this today as business analysts, when we have to go and get requirements and working projects and working change and do all of these different things, we typically do what I say, 10 basic things that every business analyst does. And I call it the knowledge brief. We go out and we do our investigation. We like investigative journalists, we go out and we try to understand what is the background or the project that we're doing, what is the problem or opportunity that we are facing, what are the critical success factors, what are the what's the root cause analysis, what do our stakeholders need, what's our current state, our future state, our business requirements, our cost to benefits, and then next steps. And essentially, that all boils down to, let's say, a business case, but you obviously work through all of these processes as you go through them. So the knowledge brief for me just sums up what business analysts do. And for those who've been asked the question by your family or friends, what does a business analyst do? I just say I'm an investigative journalist for the business. But now I want to show you the impact of AI on the role of a business analyst. As I mentioned recently, I co-founded Aiden, and I'm going to show you how AI can take the 10 things that a business analyst does and run it and deliver it in seven minutes. And everything here, I'm not a programmer, <laughs> everything here uh, is designed using agentic approaches. I'll go into a little bit more detail. It's designed using prompt engineering and markdown. That, that's all. 
So let me get started. So I add a document. I say how many sources I want. I say create a knowledge brief about the effects of business analysis. I spelled that wrong, but luckily it just <laughs> a good enough job. And so now we've got a prompt and it's asking me. So this isn't just a chat, it's asking me what is the issue that you want to look at? So I said a new job description. It says, great, fine. Is this what you want to cover? It's confirming with me. So this is what we would call in AI um, chain of thought reason. Okay, and then I obviously sped it up and there we go. Here's a knowledge brief. Okay, so what is the background of the issue that we're dealing with? What's the problem statement that we're doing? What are the cr critical success factors for the AI business analyst? Uh, sorry, there's some sound in the background. If everyone could turn their sound off, it'd be great. Stakeholder analysis. And then we've got user stories, 20 user stories about the role of the business <gasps> analyst. Andre, could you find it? And just please turn that sound off for whoever's Hello, you're, there. you're on mute. We can't hear you. Okay. I, I shouldn't be on That's mute. So, yeah. Somebody else has um, got their sound on, so whoever it is. Okay. So as I was mentioning, the, the knowledge brief, all the things that we do when we're investigating, we want to understand the background of a project, we want to understand who are we investigating, what's the problem or the opportunity, what are the critical success factors, and so forth. Um, AI managed to take my documentation, go through the documentation, develop a full report, all based on prompting and markdown, and deliver it to me in seven minutes. And I'd like to get a thumbs up if you think that this will have an impact in your role in the future. If you could just put a thumbs up, I would appreciate that. So I can gauge what the audience is saying. And now, not just that, it can create the diagram for you. So as with business analysis, we have 50 techniques in the Babok guide. So it can now look at what you would want. So it can design the diagram for you almost instantly. And it can look again at what is the current and the future state, use things like Moscow. For those who've studied the Babok Guide, you'll know that these are all things that are prescribed within the Babok Guide. And it can come up with a conclusion and make recommendations. As you can see, by prompting this, and as I mentioned, I'm not a programmer. This was done purely through obviously having the right platform, but having prompting, having markdowns to make it look a specific way and to be able to navigate between. And it took seven minutes because it's an agentic approach, which means it uses lots of chatbots or agents to create the document. So it's like automating the entire process. So you can imagine, let's say I go and interview a stakeholder, right? And I go, here's the transcript. I don't even need to write notes anymore. I just record it. I've got the transcript. 
and I go and say, I want you to create a knowledge brief around this particular issue. And you pop it in there. And seven minutes later, you will have the user, user requirements, you'll have the background, you'll have the problem opportunity statement and so forth. So I'm just using this as a use case to explain how the impact on of AI will, the impact for business analysts that AI might bring in. So when um, Vince spoke about those using AI <laughs> will be fine, but BAs who don't know how to use AI and don't use AI have a risk in their role, I believe he's absolutely right. Because for those who do stakeholder in interviews and stakeholder analysis and stakeholder delivery, all of that takes a really, a really long time to gather the information, to put all the information together. Now, uh, as let me just move forward in terms of what your skills might be uh, or need to be as a business analyst moving forward. So the first thing that you'll need to really understand as an AIBA is context building. AI is really dumb when it doesn't understand the context of things. So you have to ensure that you've got the right context at the right time. Prompt engineering, this is not going to be an optional thing. And I've said in many of the interviews that I had with the, the different speakers is that it's almost like gathering requirements. So when we look at prompt engineering, we want to understand how do we structure the instruction for the AI so that we can get the best outputs at the end of the day. And this is something that the Babbock Guide talks about all the time. What are the inputs and what are the outputs? Human in the loop? Absolutely. Business analysts are going to need to start focusing on analyzing and less around documentation. They're going to have to validate and verify data. AI is not always correct. So when I show you the knowledge brief done by AI, what I'm showing you there is that AI is going to give you a starter, as I often say, a starter for 10, and I see Andre said a starter for seven, a starter to help you analyze, verify, validate the information that you require to get going. Analytics and reporting, so getting data insights really quickly. Requirements automation, you can start automating requirements because re requirements are predictable, especially if you're using business architecture. A document analysis. This really surprised me with AI. I thought, oh my word, AI is going to take away this horrible documentation we're going to do all the time. The reality is that AI is your ability to truly analyze data and documentation is going to actually have to be elevated because humans understand context much better than AI could ever understand context, at least for now. And that means you will have to understand what that context is going to be for the organization. And so the documents and the reviews and, and the instructions that you give AI, you will have to manage that. So that was almost disappointing because I thought, oh, maybe we could skip past the docos. No. Data management, yes, you're going to need to understand how AI structures data. And then stakeholder engagement is actually going to probably become more important because a lot of the grunt work that we do as BAs in terms of getting the first draft out takes heaps and heaps of time. We could spend more time working with people to validate and verify and get what I would call a prototype or, or just a wireframe of, of what the needs are out really quickly um, means that we can confirm things much faster. So if you want to talk about Agile, that's probably where you'd be going is to get a prototype out super fast, say, this is the use case we're dealing with, and then start engaging with stakeholders in a much more meaningful way, not just trying to drag information out, them, out of them 
all the time. So just to reiterate, and let me just confirm the time. To reiterate, context building means you have to explain to AI how things come together. What company do you work for? Why do you work for that company? What project are you having? Now, in business analysis, we have what's called the Backham model. I call it Backham, which is the business analysis core concepts. And you have to think of what is the change? What is the need? What is the solution? What is the, who is the stakeholder or stakeholders? What's the value and what's the context? And so whenever we prompting or working with AI, we've got to consistently think about that. Now, AI tools actually allow you to build context. And so you'll see that with Aiden, for instance, you have workspaces where you can tell AI about your project or your business. So context is actually used quite often in AI, but not maybe the way that you think it's used as a, a way of structuring data and structuring outputs. So context building means providing in, insight to AI to frame and make sure that the AI is delivering things in a very specific way. Chain of thought or chain and tree of thoughts. As I mentioned to you, this visualization that I'm showing here, which is basically a prompt. This is called a chain of thought prompt. So this is where you're telling AI, first, I want you to do this step and gather this information. And so as I complete that information, but it has now stopped just running off and giving me all of the insights. It's actually stopped and this thing. So this is what we call reasoning models where AI can now reason. So you can give it a step-by-step -step instruction. You can say, I want you to do this, and then I want you to do that, and I want you to do that, and blah, blah, blah. And so these are uh, really Im important. So when you're prompting, you need to understand things like, what are the capabilities of AI? We talk about the CoStar framework, and that's really around making sure that you give the who, the what, the why. So again, the context, you give good instructions. In my experience, a lot of people will say AI is dumb. It doesn't answer things properly, blah, blah, blah. But it's most likely the prompt. That's more likely. Now, I'm, I'm, being, I'm saying that tongue in cheek and I'm talking about basic things. But as I explain, the entire knowledge brief, uh, knowledge brief has been generated out of prompt engineering so therefore <laughs> it's quite hard to say now whether the outcome is that is for the VA to validate but it still gave you the desired effect from that so you you need to provide context you need to break down complex tasks into smaller tasks and so this no so AI in this case understands this is step one I have to first get from the user the information and the context about things. Um, structure prompts to elicit specific types of outputs. So for instance, with prompt engineering, how do you want it to look? How do you want, what do you want to see? Um, what do you not want to see? And so forth. And how's the language going to be constructed? Very important things. Human in the loop. Human in the loop is going to be, as I mentioned, one of the most important things for you to understand as a BA and as an investigative journalist role, type of role. A very interesting um, thing with human in the loop is that what you're doing is you become, let's say, the governor of what AI brings out. So you've got to think of AI, and uh, I think a lot of people that are interviewed during Blueprints use the same term. It's like an intern doesn't really know much, but it can give you some stuff and then you need to validate and verify it. And so depending on the types of tools that you have, you can actually edit in line. So as AI starts producing content, you can edit that content immediately and, and get that. Um, or you reprompt it and you get different versions of that particular prompt. So validation, verification, 
and working with AI rather and governing AI. So you the boss <laughs> and AI is not the boss, but AI is going to do a lot of that mundane work that we had to do as BAs. Um, I think I skipped. No, I didn't. Creating dashboards and insights. Edge images have really become a, a key part of what we do with AI. And so being able to visualize, you've got things like mermaid graphs and charts, and these are all very valuable things to consider when you are visualizing to your stakeholders. I've always said, don't underestimate the value of a visual to your stakeholders. You can now get AI to take your data and visualize it for you. And particularly, it depends on what AI models you're using and also what AI application you're using. But as I said, in Aiden, clearly <laughs> we have that available. But it's really helpful to be able to do those kind of strawman wireframe type of, of visualizations. Requirements creation. As I said, requirements are very predictable. We understand requirements when we understand context. Understanding the context, building the prompt, building the use case is, is a very important component. I question whether in the future we will be using things like user stories and that because AI is pretty smart and could probably jump a few steps, but we're not there yet. So <laughs> don't worry, uh, this is still part. But requirement creation, if you are doing proper document analysis, and proper document submissions, your requirements could be drawn out from the interviews, from the observations, from the images that you up update, and can be converted into things like user stories. And that can all be automated. So you can create an entire um, requirements gathering process. And my comment there is, AI can help you do the requirements and a business analyst would essentially be focused more on the validation verification as I've be, been emphasizing here. Document analysis, as I said, it was a surprise to me with AI that this is going to be more important. Being able to really truly read and understand. Jesper, who I'm mentioning uh, tomorrow, spoke about how we need to be able to understand English and, and different languages well enough so that we write enough and we can analyze correctly. And not to say that large languages can't have multiple languages, that's not what I'm implying, but just really being able to structure the way that you say things is going to be very important. Uh, so you will need to understand the purpose of documents. You will need to structure the documents using things like Markdown uh, and so forth. And the reason I say Markdown, and this might just be a temporary thing for now, but Markdown is used with AI to create the structure that you see there. So it is uh, almost like the creating how the document or the output is going to um, be reviewed and seen. And again, I'm not a programmer, um, but it's fairly simple to understand how to structure a document um, using Markdown. So it's it's not completely undoable by everybody who's in the room right now. And then obviously document attributes. This was a really important thing, actually. And I suppose, Kitty, you could also mention some of these things. But... AI needs to understand what is this document about? So we, we call it metadata, right? So what's what data, what's the data about the data? And so when you create documents, you not you need to make sure that you name your files correctly, that you um, put in references. These are things that AI needs because again, it doesn't understand context. So if you're feeding AI, you need to ensure that you are giving it the right context, even in your data structures um, as you're going through that. So when we look at what does the role entail? 
So with business architects, I often talk about knowledge bases, storing your information, storing your data, making sure you've got a robust set of data. For business analysts, I talk about the knowledge brief. How do we obtain information um, from our data and our interviews and our stakeholders and everything? And how do we put that together? And then with AI, there's also something called a knowledge graph. And a knowledge graph is really putting connected parts together and using that. So that's not something you really need to worry about right now as a business analyst, but certainly understanding the knowledge brief would be very helpful. Okay, so here we get to it, the job description. So the AI business analyst, as I said, you can download this. It's much longer than what you see here. And I've looked at what we have in the BABOC and I've looked at what would you need to be able to do as a business analyst who is also looking at AI more effectively. And so you're not going to change your traditional skills, right? Your ability to plan, monitor, and all of the things we talk about in AI. We're not going to change any of those things. Sorry, in business analysis, we're not going to be changing any of those things. But what we will be doing is adding additional skills that are required. And so when we look at, sorry, click, particularly tools and techniques. Again, I want to make everybody feel super comfortable. I knew nothing about this a year ago. And now I feel super comfortable to create the knowledge brief using AI. So just like myself, you can probably do something very similar. You'll need to look at prompt engineering, markdown and documentation, model features and leveraging. So knowing which model to use, are you going to go with a GPT, uh, OpenAI? Are you going to go with Claude? Are you going to go with Grok? Are you going to go with perplexity? You have to understand how models work. Uh, you don't have to know how they're made, <laughs> um, but you do need to have an understanding that they're different kinds of AI and different kinds of models. You'd need to look at what I would say workspace architecture. How are you creating this virtual world for your AI to understand your business a little bit better? And that would really be looking at how do you create the agentic approach? How do you build different agents or assistants that are going to do things and prompt things? Filing and creation management, so making sure that you file things properly, put them in the right place, store them with the right names, all of those. We, we've known this for ages. This is still a problem. It hasn't changed <laughs> since kind of the whole internet, everything, data is data structuring and, and data quality is a huge problem. And AI is not going to be able to fix it if we don't work on it. And then you'll also need to understand what vectors are, which is just embeddings, which is just a different way to store things. Again, not something that's hard to learn. And then what are age, uh, agents? So what? how do they use tools and those kind of things? So those are the key things, skills and techniques that you'll need to add to your toolbox. As I mentioned, the full document is available. I would be remiss to say we do have a full training program on the knowledge brief if you want to go to the site but again the links will send you to all of this for architects we've got prompt engineering that's available and i do have a live course coming out in february on how to do all of this so there's again no programmer needed you can learn how to do everything that i've discussed today in this course, you will also get one year free access to Aiden so that you can actually do it yourself. So for those who are interested, please just follow the link and you will get more information. I think I'm on time and we have some time for some questions moving forward. So any Q&A, anything you want me to reiterate or confirm from this session? Now I can look at the comments. Hi, it's Kitty. Yes, hi, Kitty. 
Yeah, not a question, but some comments. I'm really uh, passionate about um, soft skill, mm -hmm. creativity, empathy, uh, critical thinking, thought leadership. This is so powerful because I notice AI is not there yet. <laughs> so we still yes, have a job. Absolutely. Yes. So, so the little suggestion is um, add this to your syllabus. Yes. It is so powerful. I you are 100% correct. And I missed some of that because I was yeah. adding the, yeah, the yeah. human to human contact is going to have to become even better. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely agree. Thanks, Kitty. Yes. That's and it also, about me. Yep. <laughs> I, yeah. I'll be quiet. <laughs> That's all right. We had a great chat, by the way. We went way over our, our time with the interview. David, Alan, did you guys, Peter? Yep. Go for it. Peter? Yes, hi. Hi. I I don't know if this was I was coming late a little bit, so I'm not sure if this was already discussed. What about that like data protection and data which you security. Like, yes. Uh, you know, yeah. Secureness because if, especially if you work with the big customers, they're really cautious about putting their data to the eyes. So was this already a topic? No, we actually I didn't speak about that, but that's a really good point. So although the BA, and, and tomorrow we'll talk about it more with the architect around the data protection and storage and blah, 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 but it is really important to recognize that AI does, if you th use things like chat G GPT, then they have the right to train their models using that. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that you're using um, you know, a provider that doesn't retrain the models of your data. So it's a really good point to know, to know. So I think for business analysts, you really do need to understand what what data you send in and what um, what AI platform you use in, what are the rules around the, the data storage. I always say to people, and this is so important, right? If you're going to put your product catalog in AI, it's already online. It's already in AI. That's not a data risk, right? So, so understanding the difference between, oh, this is the secret stuff from the FBI or whatever, don't put that in, right? But if it's already on your website and you're already selling the products and you're already doing that, there is no reason not to add that because it's publicly available anyway. So, yeah, that's what my suggestion would be. So hopefully that answers your question, Peter. Lerato. Uh, my question is an extension to Peter's question. I work in a very highly regulated environment right now. and There's a huge concern around adopting AI. And uh, the tool that is currently there is Copilot. Do we see Copilot assisting us is a community of business analysts also in the learning of all these different abilities to just advance um, in terms of the stuff that we do as BAs? Really good question. So firstly, I'm not a fan of Copilot. <laughs> it's just been dumped <laughs> into, uh, yeah. I don't think, I think Copilot actually it does itself a disfavor because it's, not really doing generative AI. It's just checking and giving you some tips and not great. So do I think it's a risk? I think really it's about what agreements that the company has with Microsoft. I don't think it's going to be any more risky than any of the data that you store in your Microsoft platforms, to be honest. So that I'm not so worried about. When it comes to um, looking at how are you going to actually get AI to work for you? Copilot's not going to do that. Copilot is like an editor. It's, <laughs> it's, that's why I say knowing what model to use. So I think that they need, with a highly regulated government, choose an AI partner that manages your data and doesn't share it with AI and that has regulations in terms of AI and how things work. That is something we did with Aiden because we thought, we know the problem that business is going to have. They don't want to share everything. So make sure that you're using a partner that actually 
does not share it back to any large language models. But when it comes to co-pilots, it's a text editor in my mind, <laughs> but hey, each to their own, I suppose. I hope you, the writer, that helps you <laughs> in all of this. I'm in the same movie. I'm in the same movie. I think what would actually help is to try the other models, obviously outside of the organization, in your own capacity. But other than that, so far, Copilot is not doing it. Okay, so it's not just me, thank goodness. <laughs> Alan, are you next on the list? I think David was actually. It's okay. Okay. Um, yeah, oh, firstly, I just wrote in the chat um, <laughs> how to turn off Copilot because it's not easy. But um, Copilot will assist you with that. It's wonderful. Um, yeah. uh, it's clippy all over again, isn't it? Um, yeah, I know. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. <laughs> I guess, um, look, it's really interesting. It was a great talk. Thank you, dear, Deirdre. That was um, uh, really insightful as well. And a couple of points I just want to make. At the recent Festival of Business Analysis, one of the speakers in Adelaide gave, uh, guided us on a journey that they went through with their public utility on building trust within the organisation to adopt AI within the organisation. And they went through the process of trying to figure out how to overcome that whole data security side of things and <clears throat> ensuring that their information isn't being stored overseas in places where, where they have no access to it or other governments have access to it. And they resolved all of those problems. And within nine months, it's being utilized by about 80% of the organization and has Absolutely. dramatically increased their productivity. It's phenomenal. My concerns around it, though, and I raised this to the guy who was giving the talk, was from my point of view as a business analyst of many years, I don't so much have FOMO, fear of missing out. It's more FOBO, which is fear of becoming obsolete. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking the work that AI saves you, a lot of that is the thinking that humans do. So mm -hmm. we're transferring all of that creativity and that understanding and context, whatever, over, not so much the context, but as you said, but over to the AI. And all our task now is to validate that, to make sure that it's not giving us false or irrelevant information back. And so is that a good thing? Do we really actually, embrace that? Actually, this is a really good point. Delvin actually mentioned this. He, he was saying, what do we do with the speed, for instance, of AI and he suggested it gives us more time to think through things. And actually, that will add a lot more value. Like when you look at projects, the biggest issues, when you talk about project management, time, resource, budget, right? So you can reduce time and you can improve the budget just because of the time, right? So if you then go, actually, now we have more time to go through this in a lot more detail, to get our prototypes going sooner than later, rather than trying to make it too, too hard, capturing that data. Even with architecture, you can speed things up now, today, if you do architecture correctly. But I see AI more as giving you the starter, much quicker access to the information, to the use case that you want to use, and then let BAs analyze. So I'm not worried about the role. At one point when I started studying this, I thought to myself, oh, no, BAs are going to become irrelevant. I honestly thought that. I've never been scared about change, with change, but that was where I was going with this. And then I looked at it and I thought, okay, so now I can create the knowledge brief in seven minutes. But... I have to go through each of that. I've got to talk to the stakeholders. I've got to understand, is that actually what they want? Because now at least I know what questions to ask them. So I don't see the role as becoming re redundant or irrelevant or anything like that. But I do think, and as what Vin said, if the person doesn't know how to do their own job as an analyst, as a proper analyst, not just someone who's been a documenter for many years, if that person doesn't know how to do that, it will affect their role. And it absolutely will, because <laughs> if AI is spitting out the docs and you can't analyze them, 
then you're not an analyst, right? Um, so <laughs> I think it'll, bring, it'll bring some. I think it'll bring some people to light. That's all I see, and that won't be because of AI. That will be because of the skill of the individual um, at hand. Okay, that's oh, and another thing, somebody said again. I think it was Delvin, but I could be wrong. He mentioned that business, we can now do more projects, right? That's the thing. The projects take forever in a day. Now we can go, all right, what used to take us a year, we do it in three months. Uh, so those are all things that are benefits because we don't run out of change projects in organizations ever. <laughs> We've always got to choose what not to do. So yeah, AI can be a good enabler to get projects done get more projects done. So I don't think the role is going to be affected. I don't know if anyone else had their hand up, but I'll quickly have a, a, a look through. Uh, yeah, you can anonymize your data. I, I still would be wary of that because it, it can be traced. But yes, you can use cases like you, instead of saying, I'm an energy company, you can say, I'm a fashion outlet, blah, whatever. Of course, you, you can do that. RJ, is there a down, document to download? Yes, there are three documents to download. All of the recommendations by the people that were interviewed around AI, the comments, the, the new job description, and what is the third one? Oh, and then there's the library, which is free, the AI library for business. Again, all free downloads you can use almost immediately. Andrew, if you wouldn't mind, if you could put a link in, that would be fantastic into the chat right now, then people can grab hold of that. But again, I will be sending out the link later. Marie, you have a question. Maybe you just said a heads up. I don't know. I'm um, so sorry. Oh, I was go. looking for my phone. <laughs> so sorry. Okay, no worries. I had a, just a quick comment. I think your presentation is just marvelous. And it gives me a lot of confidence for the next step about AI. And so I just wanted to share this with you and you all. So yes, thank you so much for taking the lead, I should say. <laughs> You're most welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate that. And I really did want to say to BAs, this is not a scary thing to learn. It's just learning. I say that for everything, really. It's just learning. It's a, another language. If you study the Babak, you have to learn all the words. It's going to be very much like that. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Andre has shared the link. Um, to everyone, you should be able to find it. Um, you have to sign in for those who've never signed in to, um, but we don't sell your data or anything like that. It's just there. Um, and yes, you have free to download. I just want to highlight that it is material that we create. And so it's not for commercial purposes, just the normal stuff that everyone knows. But please feel free to share it share the links and get everybody on board and please tell me what you think of the job description just like kitty mentioned maybe we can update it and make it a little bit better i think that might be a good thing so there's time for one more question if anyone has but we um almost on the hour i'm happy to facilitate but yeah you've got the link so if anyone else has one more thing to ask i'm more than happy to assist you're good. Okay. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate your comments, your views. Please keep in touch. I'm trying to grow this AI community quite significantly. Keep in touch. I'm always on LinkedIn. Welcome to help. Have a look at my website. Have a look at Aiden. Have a look at all these things. Give us your feedback. I'd really appreciate that. That would be awesome. Thanks, everybody. And thanks for the people that I interviewed that are here today. I see Omar and Tamara. I've seen you on the list now. So that's fantastic. 
look at what they had to say as well. Alrighty. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. See ya. See ya. Bye. See ya. See ya. Excellent. See you, yeah. uh, see you soon, DJ. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye, Kitty. Have a good one.